All right, we're starting on assignment three, our animation project, and we're trying to come up with our planning sketch, our rough storyboard. We have to show a transformation. I'm going to sketch this digitally, just for expedience. And so what I'm going to do is just do a quick screen grab of the assets that I'm going to use to remind myself of. Then I'm going to save this as my assignment three reference. We're going to talk more about that. But I'm going to open up a new Photoshop file. I have my tablet. I'm just going to do a basic sketch. So I'll do the standard 11 by 14 inches by 350. That's kind of my standard. I'll make a new layer. I'll use my brush tool. I'm going to use an opacity of about 70. And I'm going to draw three squares next to each other with space in between them. This row is the beginning of my animation. This is how things start. Because we get to control the time. And then three squares in the middle. This is the middle of my animation. The beginning sets things up, the middle kind of showcases them, or frames the action. And then the end, the last three frames, are going to show the consequences of that transformation. My squares do not need to be perfect, but my animation will be digital so that it will all be in the exact same square format. We're going to make those squares 8 inches by 8 inches at 100 pixels per inch. Okay, so now I need a character. A character is the thing that you help your audience experience the story through. And we know the story has to showcase a transformation. So if I'm using my fantasy creature and my landscape, I've got my character. Instead of my character being the same and then my landscape changing around it, I'm going to make my character the dynamic thing that we experience a transformation through. And I can have more than one character. So I'm going to have my, I'm going to say X, that's my fantasy creature, and Y. And Y is going to be, I was thinking about it, I want to have a neon mosquito. I think that would work well in this surreal. That was so weird. I typed in neon mosquito and it auto filled adopt me. That's creepy. All right. So this shows you that you can bring in new, new elements, right? I'll search for one later and decide kind of what kind of neon mosquito I want to use. It doesn't need to be high resolution because this is a screen based project, right? And this mosquito is going to be pretty small in the environment. But my idea is I want to introduce the setting. Get my screen grab back. Just going to put it in the corner here. Oh, wrong one. That was still copied from. Uh, another file. Let's see. Here he is. So I'm just going to tuck this in the corner so I don't have to look outside for it. Okay, so my landscape. My landscape's pretty basic. That's what I'm going to start with. This is my setting. So you need character and you need setting. And I have this, you know, big moon. So I'm going to have a neon mosquito and my fantasy creature, and then my setting is going to be this surreal desert that I created. And to begin, I'm going to do what's called an establishing shot. So EST for short. And I'm just going to establish the setting. My next panel Everything has to change in each of these. It wouldn't make any sense to just draw the same thing, right? Because you can 
Take as long as you want to establish the setting. I'm going to introduce Y. That's my character, and it's going to be this little mosquito. So let me draw him in. He's going to be glowing. And I can even make that note. So what you're writing here are the actions in this environment. So he's going to cross the moon. And you can. this is something that's helpful for storyboarding. You can even put arrows to kind of show the direction you want things to come in. So this is going to come in from the right-hand side, my right-hand side, looking at the screen, and then follow through to the left. And you're going to wonder, where is my next character going to be? Well, my next character is going to be hiding behind uh, this mountain. And when the mosquito is about here, almost out of frame, this character is going to peek out. That's my idea, with an open mouth. Rawr. and then is going to snap shut and eat this mosquito. So that's going to be a quick change. This huge kind of kaiju character. Remember, these can be silly. They're GIF animations. You're not going for like feature length special effects. So this introduces X and then X eats <laughs> Y. Now, so far, I have not shown any kind of transformation. Right? I've introduced characters. I've shown movement. I have a mouth opening and closing. But there's nothing has changed. They're just movement tests. Right? So to show a transformation, because that is the illusion of time passing, once he eats it, now I'm going to have my creature start glowing like the mosquito was. And this glowing creature, boom, 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 is going to glow, glow, glow. You can always edit these ideas. And I actually am going to change it a little bit. So let's see, X glows and glows. <laughs> And the background setting, which is so stable, right, is going to kind of break apart. He's going to go nuclear. And then everything's going to crack. So the setting itself will crack and fall away. This kind of glowing, burnt-out creature in the middle. Now, there's a lot of little decisions I'll still have to make. Like, do I want the creature to kind of shrink as that's happening? Do I want it to the glowing to expand and overtake everything? This is the stuff that happens in between your frames because this is the time passing. And my goal always for these projects is to not be as ambitious as I want to be because I want to be able to show it within class time, right? But what's nice is that by the end, my goal is to set to reset so that everything will be bright, but slowly this background will start to fade in again so that it starts over and then can play through. All right, so that is my, my plan. That is my sketch. So now I'm going to save that. I'll save it without this guy, just as a, as a uh, JPEG, and with my name. And this is called a rough storyboard. Where do you use rough storyboards professionally? Let's say you're in marketing, you're trying to pitch uh, getting funding from a client to do a little social media video campaign, 
<coughs> you do like a really rough storyboard. The square format is what Instagram is, is what you know you can use for a lot of social media. You do a rough storyboard sketch to help them visualize the idea. Like what are the priorities? What are you trying to communicate? You do a rough storyboard sketch if you're a director and you're trying to, to pitch a movie to a studio to fund. You don't have any of the, the finished settings or the, the actors or the costumes or even the concept designs fully. You just have an idea of what are the big actions you want to show. And that is often enough to get you what you need for the next step. The next step is to start hiring your actors, building your sets, location scouting, and we do that all digitally by finding our assets and we make a folder for these in our assignment folder. So I've got my character, I've got my setting, now I've got to find my mosquito. And always good to use Pixabay if you can. I always feel a little weird, even though it's educational, using things from, from stock sites like Shutterstock. So let's see. Now I can find a neon mosquito, but I can also use my compositing techniques to turn any mosquito into something neon. Good, so if I use Bright Mosquito, right, I get this free element. That's pretty cool looking. So I'm going to download that. It doesn't need to be large. In fact, I'm going to keep it pretty small. But that's an asset I can use. And then if I need Neon Wings, because this is a surreal one, so maybe... Yeah, I use wings like this. This is all from Pixabay. I'll use this for my wings. I'm going to start to build these assets that I need for my story. And then I might want some effects, right? So like nuclear glow. Just look up nuclear. They're not going to have that many photos of it, which makes sense. It's hard to pay for the insurance for the nuclear glow of photography. But you'll find lots of illustrations. That's kind of cool. It's AI generated. I could always AI generate some of these assets too, as long as they're not creating anything more than just pixel assets to composite. And there's nothing more fun to animate than chaos, right? Organic chaos, like fire, clouds, all of that's fun. But I think I actually like this one. I like how, how subtle this is. So I'm going to download that. This is a pretty big asset, and I think I can make use of that to make my, my glows happen. Because we're going to get more and more free form with how we use the pixels, you know, turning them more and more into our own. We could even just draw things in if we wanted to with this project, as long as we're using something we've already created. This might be kind of fun to use. We'll see. So you think of them as texture overlays, but these are going to be like explosions. Or... And again, you can always have more assets than you need. This will be our, our final compositing project. After this, our projects are all creating things on our own, but we can still be inspired by things. So this goes to inspiration. And there's lots of types of time-based media out there to be inspired by. Some of it's photographic-based, some of it's all drawn, very graphic. Um, I really like the animation of Terry Gilliam. 
and Terry Gilliam 